I'm going to just give you an introduction as to what we think is a, a frame article for the for the watch, which is how how these discourses come about. Where do the what do the where do they emerge from? This is an article together with Elizabeth Ajine from Brazil and Tony Los Alpes in uh, India. And we want to analyze how this emergence of the narrative within the food systems that in appearance is general, how is it a change of paradigm? Because for me, it doesn't bring any solutions. It is an empty vessel that doesn't uh, table any specific solutions. But uh, because it's empty, then perhaps it's been filled in with corporate solutions, which are the full solutions, or then with solutions that are actually uh, people and nature centric. The article also tells us why the definition of food systems based on an agro industrial uh, food system is actually problematic. And it also the article explains what the solutions and the strategies are from the corporate world, are that what, which ones are those corporate uh, solutions that actually simply serve to perpetuate um, a system that doesn't work and it doesn't actually offer real solutions and is actually favors a context of um, multiple stakeholders, but that actually always given a role in companies within the governance of food systems, which is something that we didn't see before. And this increases the uh, the, the um, problem with the balance of power. And so here we have a tug of war, if you will. We're fighting to see how we're filling those empty vessels, if you will. And at the end of the article, we uh, make a few proposals, we show some pillars, which are key, which to our view are what we should be defending from the community base, from the uh, organizational base point of view, so that we can have real solutions. And those real solutions mean that we have to be nature and people centric. Let me Let me tell you a little bit about these different pillars. Um, first of all, when we talk about how that food system is born, we actually say how, despite the fact that the system has to be comprehensive and show all the different convoluted relationships uh, concerning food systems, what we have seen uh, throughout, uh, for example, the uh, uh, CFS, uh, discussions and the food summit discussions is a reductionist view, is a simplistic view, which actually ignores the real problems of um, financing, patriarchy, colonialism, and it doesn't actually give us a, a guideline. It, it doesn't allow us to have a bearing for a more just society, for a healthier society or a more sustainable society. So the proposal needs to be something that moves away from the current definition of food systems, because that is wrong. And we need to think about um, farmer systems and indigenous people systems. And and we have to see how we can engage uh, supply chains that are not corporate global supply change, chains, if you will. And we need to start not favoring uh, the enrichment of the big corporation in detriment of um, everyone else. And then here we need to talk about the finance sector and the digital world as well. So the article gives you a list of issues that are within that dominant or prevailing food system definition. And we see human rights being used as a banded concept and it's a very superficial concept being used. Um, and food systems are analyzed through a market perspective, really, and that's wrong. 
is a food system is seen as a commodity and not as something for all. So this is not sustainable. This is, uh, as I said, a reductionist uh, view because at the end of the day, we have the problem of forest destruction, uh, greenhouse gases problem. So we need a really a comprehensive vision, seeing the complexity of the matter. And also, we need to pay attention to the power relationships to see how corporations are violating human rights or uh, contribute to the violation of human rights and how the whole corporate system is trying to justify decisions through scientific neutrality. And that's not uh, valid because we know that many um, scientists um, representatives of conflicts of interest themselves. And we need to think about what is the viewpoint? This is coming from the global north, ignoring the global south, if you will. And um, thinking about uh, this prevailing system concept, we have seen strategies, for example, the um, civil society mechanism, the, C the SCM, this will allow us to fill with content that's empty vessel and will allow us for a different interpretation. And it's something that we're going to uh, be dealing with when we talk about food systems. There are also people who are skeptical. We did some interviews to uh, draft the, the article and Fian Colombia, for example, or the author from India would say, some terms come from the global North elites and we're not going to be able to fill in that empty vessel. So we would prefer different concepts, uh, the food process, processes, for example, and to perhaps base ourselves more clearly on the right to food and nutrition. The second half of the article mentions business solutions who are based on a, a globalized world, a globalized model that in turn increases the gap uh, in, in inequalities as to say some of these solutions would appear in fact that they are sufficient but they're not they're simply selling the same old thing to us more concentration of power and uh, wealth in the same hands and also it's makes our reality a bit more um, fragmented because they, it's a very single, they one track mine, if you will. We're not thinking about the small kale producers. Some small kale producers are actually feeding 70% of the population or more than 70% of the population. And they set uh, the rules of the game, uh, a game that hasn't worked or rules that don't work for us. So we have the argument of the fortified foods which are presented to us as this is a solution for malnutrition, but they're also an opportunity for business for the corporate world. And it actually is a disconnect. It doesn't, it doesn't, two minutes, you have two minutes, and it doesn't really link communities to the spiritual side of, um, or to the natural side of feeding. We've also talked about the weakening of institutions and we need to strengthen uh, and we need to stop, I beg your pardon, we need to stop the strengthening of this uh, power of these uh, corporate sectors. And also we have started use, seeing the use of agroecology, which also uh, it, at the same time affects these power relationships. And it's also focusing on uh, data and science, but it's ignoring the knowledge and the wisdom of um, indigenous communities. And at the end of the day, we talk about the key things that we should be defending, and I'm going to mention some, which is the importance of recovering and defending the role of the public institutions, which have actually um, moved away and they have given way to the 
corporate world. So they have a legal responsibility. And then also we need to think about dif different solutions. So differentiation of, of solutions, the importance of not simply thinking about standard, standard solutions. We need to recognize that we need a diversity of solution will depend on the context. And also we need, really need to include farmers and indigenous uh, populations fishermen and um, shepherds and also we make a final reflection about human rights uh, from the viewpoint of uh, food sovereignty and also we link this to environment principles which for, to us are the solution that will make things nature and people centric and will actually make our governments accountable and that um, would mean that we need new new tools uh, which uh, let us uh, let us remember to the different declarations. Thank you, Isa.